Hi, so this is my second video on creating generative sequences on the electron model samples. And this is meant to be more of an intermediate level. Uh, I'm going to build on what we did last time and add a bit more complexity. So I made this little generative sequence and uh, here's my sounds. Okay, so some longer samples there. Um, and this one also, a little bit different every time I hit it because I've got an LFO or a, with a random wave set up on it. So um, first let's just take a quick listen to this. Okay, so just to kind of reverse engineer this one a little bit. Okay, so my track one here is my kick. So I just have your standard four to the floor, but I also added um, a retrig on here. So this, this last one here, it's got a retrig, and also I used nudge to get it as close as possible to that one. And it has a 60, 67% chance of happening. So it doesn't happen every time. So let's listen to just that one. Oops, going the wrong way here. Okay, so let's listen to just track one. So here about a third of the time it drops this trig. Also, you hear how it's not, it doesn't sound exactly the same every time I hit. And that's because I have an LFO on here. Uh, so random wave LFO applied to this whole track. Uh, on the frequency cutoff. So it's just kind of varying, uh, kind of randomly varying the sound of that. Okay, so let's move on to track two. So what I did on this one is um, the whole track globally has a chance of 23%. Um, so that's kind of the default if something isn't parameter locked. But for the ones that are parameter locked, they have either their own percentage or they're set to pre. And what I did is kind of that same four to the four pattern, uh, one, five, nine, and 13, those are the leaders. And then the three trigs after them are followers. So in this, for the first one, uh, the leader has a 75% chance of happening. And then there's three pre's that follow it. So anytime this happens, all three of those, or all four of those fire. So I just broke these up into these little groups of four. Um, the first one being the leader, the other three being the follower, like that. Um, and these leaders I gave different percentages to. So that one's 59, that one's 59, this one's 81. So that's kind of randomized. Um, and let's hear what that sounds like. Oh yeah, this is also a much longer, uh, a longer sequence. So this is 32 steps. So you see I have two pages now. So, some kind of randomization there. Um, let's look at track three. So track three, we're back to just 16 steps. That's right, so this one is just a big long pre-chain. So this first one is set to 67%. All the rest of these are set to pre. And uh, so what that means, that's the same thing we did in the last video, right? So this first one happens two thirds of the time and then anytime this fires, the entire chain fires. Okay, so let's hear that. Okay, so you see it skipped it once. Um, and uh, you hear there's a bit of variability also in the sound that's from this LFO that I have on the whole track. So that's uh, um, at, you know, modulating the frequency cutoff, which is just, again, adding a bit of kind of randomization to how that sounds. All right, let's check out track four. So in track four, I've got, this is where I start using uh, 
the inverse of neighbor. We'll talk about that later, so don't worry about it yet. But um, that's for my leader. The rest of these, though, are just pre-trigs, just like everything else. So um, when this one fires, the entire chain fires. Um, so it only fired once by chance that time, but, uh, and then let's look at track five here. Okay. So on track five here, this is, uh, I guess kind of my melodic track. There's a lot of stuff happening. So first of all, it's a full 64 step sequence. Every page of that is different. And some of these are sample locked, some are parameter locked. Um, I did a bunch of stuff. Let's listen to that by itself. So uh, you can hear on this third page here, um, let's see, is it somewhere, there we go. So there's a retrig here uh, that happens sometimes. On the fourth page, uh, we get that, that blue link uh, kind of thing. So that's um, actually uh, me pitching these up and down, playing with that. So I kind of did too much on this one. Um, and I can't recreate it. <laughs> so uh, let's move on to track six. Okay. So on track six, uh, we're back to it. And we have a 64 step sequence. But you can see, you know, there's not much happening in terms of tricks, just one and nine on each of those four pages. Uh, this again is one of those long samples. All right. And I believe uh, I set it up this way so that the sample would cut itself off. Um, so let's just hear that. Yeah. And there's no chance on this. It's happening. Everything's firing every time. Um, so this is kind of my drone, I guess. It's just happening constantly. Um, okay. So now let's give another quick listen to the whole thing. Okay, so what I want to do now is take this, uh, take all of these same sounds and we're going to copy them into a new pattern and create a new sequence. Um, there's a little uh, trick here that's going to be helpful um, because I want to keep the sounds, but I don't want to keep the sequence, All right? So here's, here's I think, the fastest way to do that. So first, I'm going to copy the whole pattern. I'm going to go into my new blank slot uh, right there, and now I'm going to paste the pattern. But that copied everything, right, both the sounds and the sequence. So now go into settings pattern clear and you can choose to clear uh, just the sequence which is what I want so it's clear sequence yes there we go so now I have an empty sequence but I still have all my same sounds right and I think uh, it even keeps like other settings like my LFOs that I had applied um, it keeps that stuff too. So any parameters that you've changed for that sound, they also get copied over, which is very nice. So the only thing we deleted was the sequence data. Okay, so let's make something. Um, so I'm gonna start with just the same simple uh, four on the floor kind of beat. Okay, leave that as 16 steps. Um, and I'm actually, I'll, maybe we'll come back to that, but I'm just going to leave it for now. Okay, so on my snare, let's do something with that. I'm going to try to live record something. Why not? Hmm. 
did not seem to record my retrig there. Um, so you see that it automatically extended it to 32 steps. I think I want to take this back to 16 steps. So function page, change this length back down to 16. Ah, that's what it is. My track chance is still set to 23%, which is what I had before. There we go. So now it's going to fire every time. Okay. Happy enough with that, I think. Okay, so now let's try track three, uh, which is this uh, open hat sound uh, with a LFO on it. So why it has that bit of a randomization kind of sound to it. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing I did previously, where I'm going to turn on oops, <laughs> every single trig, right? So I've got all 16th notes there. Um, but I don't want that to fire every time. So I'm going to take each one of these. So I'm starting on the second one. Each one, setting it to pre- and just because it's a little faster, I'm just going to use copy paste. So it's copy, paste, 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 paste. Okay. So I now have the pre chain with this being my leader, just like we did last time. Now there's actually something that um, I I had the way this works. I had it wrong in my head before, and funnily enough, that didn't really matter with uh, what we did last time it still worked just fine but so I thought that the way pre works like if this one's set to pre uh, I thought it's looking at the the trig that comes immediately before it so like 16 is looking at 15 15 is looking at 14 etc well it turns out that's actually not how it works if you read the manual very carefully what it says is um, pre actually ignores all other pre trigs so 16 here is actually looking at one, because one is my only one that doesn't have a pre on it. So it's ignoring every other one. And likewise, 15 is ignoring all these and it's just looking at one. 14 is ignoring all these and just looking at one. Functionally, the pre-chain still works the same. It's just kind of an interesting thing that uh, to me that I, uh, that I, I had misunderstood. So um, let's look at our first one here. So we currently this is happening, uh, you know, this was still on its default. 100%, so it's happening every time. So let's set this one to be a percentage. And I'm gonna do it just, for now, I'm just gonna do it as 50%. So half the time, this will fire. Um, so that's all working as we expect. Um, now, let's start playing with the, the NEI, the neighbor one. So I'm going to switch to my track 4 here, which is uh, a ride symbol. No LFO on this one, just, uh, just straight. So I'm going to do the same thing, fill in every single trig. Uh, and again, the same thing where 2 through 16 are all going to be on pre create my first one, and then copy, paste, 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 no, why is that not working, sorry, copy, okay, so my leader here uh, currently is set to fire every time, and then all of these will fire anytime number one fires, um, so now number one though, instead of setting it to a percentage, this time I'm going to play with 
NEI, neighbor. The neighboring track is always the, the track that's just to the left or the lower number. All right, so track four is looking for track at track three. Track three is looking at track two, two is looking at one. So it's kind of like the pre, previous, but it's per track instead of per trig. That's, that's the difference. Um, so right now I have it set to uh, NEI, neighbor. All right, so what that means is anytime track three fires, track four will also fire. And remember, this one was set to 50% chance. So let's see what happens. See, so these ones are kind of in sync. They're always gonna go together. But what I think is more interesting than that is instead setting this one to inverse pre, right? So, or sorry, inverse uh, ne or neighbor. Uh, so neighbor with the line over it, which means when whenever the neighbor track three does not fire, then this one fires. And again, remember track three is set to a 50-50 or 50% chance. So that means either one of these is gonna fire either time, but they'll never fire together. So let's hear that. There you go, see they're alternating. So, um, so I think that one's pretty fun to play with. Um, so it's just kind of, it's very similar to pre, it's just again, it's, it's looking at the track, the whole track level versus just the trig level. Um, so let's move on to track five here. So for this one, this is again, kind of a long sample. But notice uh, when I hold it, it retrigs. And if I press any of the keys on the chromatic keyboard, it also retrigs. Um, so the way I did that, and that's without, without me holding the retrig, right? So the way you do that, function retrig, you get into this retrig menu, right? And this A on, always on. So that means it's just, it's as if I'm holding this all the time, but I don't have to hold it, right? And then you can also play with the rate and the length there as you want. Um, so I can get a single shot like that, or, So I think that's fun. Um, so let's see what I want to do with this one. <laughs> Hell yeah, let's do that. <laughs> that's fun. Okay. Cool. Um, so here we can take a look at those. So you can see on the, the different pages here, there's not really that many trigs happening. It's just because of that, the retrig's always on. It's making a lot of sound. There's a lot of notes happening, right? I'm just gonna leave that 100% right now. Maybe we'll come back and add something there. Um, but for now, let's see what's on track six. Okay. That's pretty long. Uh, it's actually a much longer sample, but you can see I trimmed the length down. Uh, I got both the start and the end points where I want them. This makes a nice loop. Um, so I could just loop it like that. But you hear how it has that little bit of a, it's a click, it's not so bad on this one, but here, like if I make it longer, hear that click. So that's why I trimmed it to get rid of that click from happening. Um, and yeah, effectively what I want to do is just loop this one. Um, so I could just 
you know, put in a single trig. Let's see, is this, this is six, 64 steps. So let's do, here, I could just do this. Turn it back down to 16 steps, which you can do just by cycling through here. There we go, 16, okay. I could have this fire on the first trig and loop. That's it. Let's hear just that. <laughs> Too much going on. So there's that. I think what I found last time is if I add one more, it kind of sounds better to my ears. Let's get a clean slate. Maybe I'll even tweak that start point a little bit later. See, it kind of Okay, so that's kind of my drone sound going on throughout the whole sound. Um, and now the question is, let's see, yeah, so that's one way of doing it with loop, right? And actually, I think I could just even turn loop off and it'll still, it'll still sound the same because the sample is longer than that amount. So in this case, loop's not doing anything. So I could add an LFO to that maybe. Let's do that. So I've got just these two trigs, 16 steps. Um, let's, oops. I always like to kind of start with the destination and think about what I want and then I do the rest of the parameters. So let's do, let's see, where are these set at? Okay, so I've got a lot of reverb on this one already. What it sounds like without any reverb. Pretty similar actually okay so yeah why don't we try this so this is one of my just you know favorite classic things to do so we'll set the LFO to the frequency cutoff uh, destination and we're also going to turn the resonance up so before I configure the LFO I just want to get these at the right spot so I'm just gonna play with this Okay, so in this case, I think I like this high pass filter better. It's pretty cool. So, let's have, say, 25 be our default and a lot of resonance. Go into our LFO. Um, and now, let's oops, change the depth. This is kind of the order I always do destination, then depth, then wave then multiplier. I don't know. Okay. So a lot of depth, but then let's turn this And I always try random, see what it does. It's pretty cool. I'll stick with the triangle wave on this one. And then the multiplier. Yeah, I think I like it slow. One. Maybe 
turn the depth down a bit. So we don't totally lose it like that. Okay. Let's try that. So, let's see. Let's start adding some stuff back in. See how that sounds. So, already I'm hearing track 5 is just too loud. Let's crank it back a bit. Track 6 could be a bit louder. So I'm liking it. Um, I want to add some more variation to track four here, though. It, to me, it gets a little, a little too much sometimes. So uh, again, to recap, we've got two through 16 are all set to pre, and then one is set to inverse neighbor, uh, meaning that it only fires when T3 doesn't fire, track three doesn't fire. Um, but I want to just, I want this to sound a little different. So um, I'm just going to add an LFO to that track as well. And let's do, yeah, let's try pitch on this one. Let's see how that sounds. I'll mute everything else. Just uh, for now, I'm going to change this. Oops, come here. Just going to change this uh, to 99% so that it fires almost every time. And then I'll set it back to, to neighbor later. <laughs> That's a thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> so this depth parameter, you can think of that as the intensity. So like the LFO is turning this knob for us the question is, how much is it turning? Is it going all the way, or is it going just a little bit? So smaller number means a little bit, which for something like pitch is probably what you want. And now, what number? Woo! Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, let's try that with everything. Oh, right, but also I need to set this first trig back to inverse neighbor. There we Um, let's cycle back to our first track here, the kick drum, which is doing nothing interesting, and let's uh, add a bit of interest here. So, um, what I did on the my original track was I added this trig here, um, nudged it so it's all so it's just basically firing almost at the same time as this one, um, just a tiny hair after, and um, then I set a retrig on it. Do that. I'm always a fan of retrigs. And let's just hear it like that. Okay. Sorry, let me turn off the rest of these. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good to me. So I don't want the 
this to happen every time. Um, so, of course, I can give it a percentage. Okay, so I just had to consult the manual on this because I made an assumption that I think is actually not true. So I thought that for the purposes of uh, the neighbor conditional trig, um, that track one was looping around and looking at track six. Uh, it turns out, I don't, I don't think that's actually true. Um, it doesn't explicitly say one way or the other in the manual, um, but based on the behavior I'm seeing here, I'm thinking that track one is looking for a track zero, which doesn't exist. Therefore, the neighbor condition will never be true. Um, so basically, what that means is you really can't use neighbor on track one at all, um, which is kind of a shame, but okay. So instead, I'm just going to set this one, um, let's just set this to a percentage for now, that's fine. And then we'll do another, another neighbor thing over here. So this one I currently have set to a percentage, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this one uh, set to neighbor. And then, so that's trig 14, and I'm going to find, and I only have a 16 step sequence here. The neighbor has to be the one right next to it. So I have to look on track five. Do I have a free 14? I do, although it is a 64 step sequence, not 16. So I'm not quite sure how that'll work, but whatever, let's try it. So I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to add this one and let's do another, why not another sample lock. Sure, that one. Okay, so, and I'm gonna set this one uh, to a percentage. Let's do the 50, 50, 50 thing again. So half the time this one will fire, and then the other half the time, if I set this to inverse of neighbor, then the other half the time this one will fire. So let's hear that. Oh, and I should unmute those tracks. So only those two are playing. So it's kind of hard to hear just because there's so much going on in this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the volume of this track way down uh, so we basically can't hear it but then this particular trig I'm going to turn that volume up so that we can hear it and I'll do maybe I'll leave that one okay there we go so that one fired Okay, so it is working. We're either getting this boosh kind of sound off this one um, or the other sound off this one. Okay, uh, so let's see. Let's turn this track volume back up. And just so that that's this special trig is really obvious, I'm just going to crank it way up here. There we go. I'm going to do the same on this trig here. Crank the volume way up. Maybe too much. Notice how the LFO that's on this whole track 6 is also affecting my conditional trig here. getting close to the end here. Let's turn some things back on and see where we're at.
Okay. <laughs> so I like that. I really like this craziness on track four, uh, but it was kind of firing too much just by chance. Again, these were on a 50-50 chance. So what I'm going to do is go back to my track three here, and my first one that I had set to 50-50, I'm going to just increase that to, say, 67. So two-thirds of the time this one will fire, one-third of the time this one will fire. I think that's probably going to sound a, better, a bit better. And let's see where we're at. Um, okay. Uh, so I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so now I've got uh, this one that we just made, and then also 13 was my original. Um, I'm just going to try chaining them together to see if they actually work together. So, so to do that, I'm holding pattern. Uh, the first one I want in the chain is 13, the original. And then I'm going to tap 16. It's going to be my second one. You see on the screen there it starts chaining them there. And then uh, let's just try those two. So notice how 13 was only um, going for 16 steps, even though it is a longer sequence. That is because you have to go to function, page, go down to this change right here. That's how long, basically how many times it'll loop in your pattern. So I want this one to be the full, oops, uh, I want this to be the full 64 because even though, um, even though some of my sequences are 16, I want, you know, some of them are long enough to be 24. Uh, let's see, I hope I did that right. Yeah, yeah, see like track six here is a 64 step. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, I'm on the wrong one again. Okay, let's get out of here. So when I'm on pattern 13, my track six is a 64 step one. Um, so I need to make sure that my change is set to 64 on both of these. So let's check 16 also. Uh, see, there we go. That one also needs to be set to 64. And again, do I actually have any? So that one's 16, 16. There we go, that one's 64. Okay, so I do. Okay, so now let's try the pattern chain again. So I think that's kind of cool. Um, they actually do work pretty well together. And really, the main reason they work is just because track one is just that simple four in the floor drum beat for the most part um, that is the same on both of them. So yeah, that's pretty easy. Um, and I'm going to also just add one little variation. You see I have 15 here is, is currently empty. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, my, my new track that we just made here, 16, my new pattern. Uh, let's copy it. Let's paste it into slot 15. Okay, so that's that's the entire thing. Um, and now I'm just going to change the um, the BPM of that. So, oops. So previously it was set to 120. Um, I'm going to do one that's that's half speed maybe. So half of 120 is 60. Um, but since it's half speed, it's now going to take twice as long to play. So on this particular one, I am going to 
change my or set my change to 32. So that way it will change over at the same time as the other ones, if that makes sense. So I cut the BPM in half, so I'm also changing, cutting my change in half uh, so that they play together nicely, hopefully. We'll see. So let's do 13, 16, 15. So you get the idea. So that's just another kind of easy way of, uh, you know, adding a little bit of variation. Just copy the entire pattern, reduce the tempo or increase the tempo either way, you know, and then play with your uh, your change in here, function page, play with that change parameter so that it makes sense.